Chest opening mastery really involves a person fully understanding and applying chess fundamentals. And somebody who's developed a chest opening system, a chest opening strategy so well that they're fully familiar with the mid game positions that they find themselves in after the opening. The other aspect of chest opening mastery is to aim for mid game positions that favour you. To develop an opening system basically where the opening lands you in a mid game position that gives you the advantage rather than your opponent. And that's what we're going to look at in the next series. So far we've talked about basic chess fundamentals. Things to keep in mind to help one develop a good chest opening quickly. In this game we're going to apply the same chess fundamentals and I'm hoping that you will recognize them. Not only that, but what we're going to do is apply some chest opening mastery to this chest opening. In simple terms what that means is we need to find a solid chest opening. One that favors us more than our opponent. We need to find a common line of play. Common lines of play are common usually because they're good, good openings. If we want to apply an unorthodox opening or a novelty move, a new idea to surprise our opponent, we would do it later on down the line. But with this, with this opening, our primal goal is to, is to get ourselves in a good mid-game position that favours us. And that's the key. So we're going to start off with the king's pawn, e2, e4. Black replies with um, pawn e5. And we go with the um, knight to f3. Black responds, knight c6. Bishop b5. As you can see again, um, we're developing uh, the pieces. We've got central control and we can castle if we want to. Black responds with knight f6. And um, we must be aware at this point of, 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 of the, um, the pawn in danger down here. And one should also be aware of the opportunity here. We can take and go for that pawn, but we're in danger of losing this. But usually if we castle at a point like this, we, we can put this guy on an open rook file and, and, and threaten the king. So that's what we're going to do here. Stick with opening principle, central control, a little bit of development, and castle him. And black takes the pawn. Now from this very position, we have some some interesting options, and this opening was 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 played and especially recognised in the 1886 match between Steinitz and Sukatert in the World Chess Championship match. It was also played again in the World Chess Champions in the year 2000. Kasparov played it against Kramnik, and it worked out quite well. Now, after applying the basic chess fundamentals, the next thing we're after is a dynamic mid-game position that favours us in some way. And so, um, there's usually two good moves that can happen here from, from this position. And that's uh, rook e1, or pawn to um, d4. In this case, we're, we're, we're going to first look at the move um, rook e1. And uh, black's most common response, knight d6. And we take um, we take on this square. We take the knight and um, black uh, recaptures. Now we can go knight d5 and the common reply would be... Um, Bishop e7 and then d4. And so we've still got some central control. 
Uh, we've got this guy threatening on 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 this square here. We'll turn into there, and we've also got the castle on this dangerous e file, pinning 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 Black's bishop here. And so that's a good opening. The castle's developed. We have a mid-game position that favours us in some way. And that's the key to get that dynamic, good mid-game position. Now if we go back, we can play around with this uh, opening. And we can do this to, to try and um, improve our mid-game position. And 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 pre-opening preparation, perhaps towards a tournament. And so this is a common thread that world championship world champions will use. They will look over their games and develop better opening systems for the next tournament and ed. And they will try to anticipate the openings that their challengers will bestow on them, so that they can figure out. A better good mid game position that favours them more than their opponent, and that's what they will primarily strive for. And uh, and so we're going to do the same formula with this idea. Now, instead of going um, knight to e5, we could also look at um, rook to e5 and we, we, we can perhaps start um, doubling up in some way putting mounting pressure on this piece that would be another idea to give us uh, some advantage but I'm also going to go back and we need to compare notes here and um, what about this move I, I do wonder Knight d6, bishop c6, dx c6, and d5. We have central control, we have a piece developed, knight f5, and then we go for the queen sacrifice, and we can put our rook on d1. This looks even better in a way. Kasparov played this. We have a, a, a piece developed, black has a piece developed, we have a pawn in the center, and we have an open rook file. Uh, black cannot castle either way, the, the rook's uh, embedded there, black needs extra moves before castling. And so I believe this, 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 this opening is rather good, and... Um, so we've hit a mid-game position. I personally favour this as the variation in the mid-game to land a satisfactory mid-game position. After further analysis, it's not just about hitting a good mid-game position, it's about looking at that mid-game position, understanding that mid-game position, so that you can play that mid-game position and survive to the end game. That's the extra secret. What can we do with this opening? Well, we can look at it, and we can we can understand the strengths and weaknesses. We can also come up with a basic strategy plan, how to go about playing from this mid-game position. We've been through the opening, we've got a mid-game position, now how do we play it? So next question. I believe one one important um, idea we should explore is is b3. We can put um, bishop on b2 and protect the pawn here and be effective along this diagonal. That's pretty uh, powerful. I think another thing to keep in mind is is pawns are going to be coming down. There's four pawns here. We're going to need this pawn up here at some point in the game. We could also trade off knights. 
if we wanted to, if bishop comes on b2. So there's quite some options around, quite some ideas. <clears throat> 